Hello everyone! I hope you're ready for another adventure. Because today, Wayne continues to read Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Yay! Always remember that as we go through these amazing stories and read these outstanding adventures, all you have to do is press the CC button in your YouTube link to be able to follow along with the words. I believe that Madam Owl will be perfect to join us for today's adventure. Now that Madam Mal is here, let's begin. Hooray! Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets Chapter 2 Dobby's Warning Harry managed not to shout out, but it was a close thing. The little creature on the bed had large bat-like ears and huge bulging green eyes the size of tennis balls. Harry knew instantly that this was what had been watching him in the garden's edge that morning. As they stared at each other, Harry heard Dudley's voice from the hall. May I take your coats, Mr. and Mrs. Mason? The creature slipped off the bed and bowed low at the end of a long, thin nose touched the carpet. Harry noticed that it was wearing what looked like an old pillowcase with rips for arm and leg holes. Um, hello? said Harry nervously. Harry Potter, said the creature in a high-pitched voice Harry was sure would carry down the stairs. So long has Dobby wanted to meet you, sir. Such is an honor. So thank you, said Harry edging along the wall and sinking into his desk chair next to Hedwidge, who was asleep in her cage. He wanted to ask, what are you, but thought it was said too rude, so instead he asked, who are you? Dobby, sir, just Dobby, Dobby the house elf, said the creature. Oh, really, said Harry, er, I don't want to be rude or anything, but this isn't a great time for me to have a house elf in my bedroom. Aunt Petunia's high false laugh sounded in the living room. The elf hung his head. Not that I'm not pleased to meet you, said Harry quickly, but er, is there any particular reason you're here? Oh yes, said Dobby earnestly. Dobby has come to tell you, sir. It is difficult, sir. Dobby wonders where to begin. Sit down, said Harry politely, pointing at the bed. To his horror, the house elf burst into tears. Very noisy tears. Sit down, never, he wailed. Never, never. Harry thought he heard the voices downstairs falter. I'm sorry, he whispered. I didn't mean to offend you or anything. Well, Finn Dobby choked the house off. Dobby has never been asked to sit down by a wizard like an equal. Harry tried to say shh and look comforting at the same time. Ushered Dobby back to onto the bed where he sat hiccuping, looking like a large and very ugly doll. At last he managed to control himself and sat with his great eyes fixed on Harry, an expression of watery adoration. You can't have met many decent wizards, said Harry, trying to cheer him up. Dobby shook his head. Then, without warning, he leapt and started banging his head furiously on the window, shouting, Bad! Bad Dobby! Don't! What are you doing, Harry? Hiss, springing up and pulling Dobby back onto the bed. Hedgewood had woken up in a particular loud screech and was beating her wings wildly against the bars of the cage. Dobby had to punish himself, sir, said the elf, who had gone slightly cross-eyed. Dobby almost spoke ill of his family, sir. Your family? The wizard family Dobby serves, sir. Dobby is a house elf, bound to serve one house and one family forever. Do they know you're here, said Harry cautiously. Dobby shuddered. Oh no, sir. Dobby will have to punish himself most grievously for coming to see you, sir. Dobby will have to shut his ears in the oven door for this, if ever they knew, sir. But won't they notice if you shut your ears in the oven door? Dobby doubts it, sir. Dobby is always having to punish himself for something. They let Dobby get on with it. Sir, sometimes they remind me to do extra punishments. But why don't you leave, escape? A house elf must be set free, sir, and the family will never set Dobby free. Dobby will serve the family until he dies, sir. Harry stared. And I thought I had a bad staying here for four weeks, he said. This makes the Dursley sound human. Can't anyone help you? Can't I? Almost at once he wished he hadn't spoken. Dobby disappeared into wails of gratitude. Kick this thing out of the house. Please, Harry whispered frantically, please be quiet. If the Dursleys hear anything, if they know you're here, Harry Potter asks if he can help Dobby. Dobby has heard of your great kindness, sir, but of your goodness Dobby never knew. Harry, who was feeling distinctly hot in the face, said, Whatever you heard of my greatness is a load of rubbish. I'm not even top of my year at Hogwarts. That's Hermione. She... But he stopped quickly, because thinking about Hermione was painful. Harry Potter is m humble and modest, said Dobby reverently, in his orb-like eyes aglow. Harry Potter speaks not of his triumph over him who must not be named. Voldemort, said Harry, 
Dobby clapped his hands over his ears and moaned, Ah, oh, he should not speak his name. Speak not the name. Sorry, said Harry quickly. I know lots of people don't like it. My friend Ron, he tried to stop thinking about Ron, was too painful too. Dobby leaned toward Harry, his eyes wide as headlights. Dobby heard tell, he said hoarsely, that Harry Potter met the Dark Lord for the second time just weeks ago, that Harry Potter escaped yet again. Harry nodded, and Dobby's eyes suddenly shone with tears. Ah, sir, he gasped, dabbing his face with the corner of the grubby pillowcase he was wearing. Harry Potter is valiant and bold. He is brave to so many dangers already, but Dobby has come to protect Harry Potter, to warn him even if he does have to shut his ears in the oven door later. Harry Potter must not go back to Hogwarts. There was a silence broken only by the chink of knives and forks from downstairs and the distant rumble of Uncle Vernon's voice. What? said Harry stammered. But I've got to go back. Term starts on September 1st. It's all that's keeping me going. You don't know what it's like here. I don't belong here. I belong in your world, at Hogwarts. No, 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 Dobby squeaked, his shaking his head so hard his ears flapped. Harry must stay where he is safe. He is too great, too good to lose. If Harry goes back to Hogwarts, he will be in mortal danger. Why? said Harry in surprise. There is a plot, Harry Potter. A plot to make the most terrible thing happen at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry this year, whispered Dobby, suddenly trembling all over. Dobby has known it for months, sir. Harry Potter must not himself be put in peril. He is too important, sir. What terrible things, said Harry at once. Who's plotting them? Dobby made a funny choking noise and then banged his head frantically against the wall. All right, cried Harry, grabbing the elf's arm to stop him. You don't have to tell me, and I understand. But why are you warning me? A sudden unpleasant thought struck him. Hang on. This hasn't got to do with Vol- Sorry. But you know who has it. You could just shake or not, he added hastily as Dobby's head tilted warringly towards the wall again. Slowly Dobby shook his head. Not- not he who must not be named, sir. But Dobby's eyes were wide and seemed to be trying to give Harry a hint. Harry, however, was completely lost. He hasn't got a brother, has he? Dobby shook his head, his eyes wider than ever. Well then, I can't think who else would have a chance of making horrible things happen at Hogwarts, said Harry. I mean, there's Dumbledore for one thing. You know who Dumbledore is, don't you? Dobby bowed his head. Albus Dumbledore is the greatest headmaster Hogwarts has ever had. Dobby knows it, sir. Dobby has heard Dumbledore's power rival those of he must unite at the height of his power, but, sir, Dobby's voice dropped to an urgent whisper. There are powers Dumbledore doesn't. Powers no decent wizard. And before you stop him, Dobby bounced off the bed, seized Harry's damp blast, and started beating himself around the head with ear-splitting yelps. A sudden silence fell downstairs. Two seconds later, Harry, heart thundering madly, heard Uncle Vernon coming into the hall calling, Dudley must have left his television on again, the little tyke. Quick, in the closet, hissed Harry, stuffing Dobby in, shutting the door and flinging himself onto the bed just as the door handle turned. What the devil are you doing, said Uncle Vernon through gritted teeth, his face horribly close to Harry's. You've just ruined the punchline of my Japanese golfer joke. One more sound of you and you'll wish you had been born, boy. He stomped flash-footed from the room. Shaking, Harry let Dobby out of the closet. See what it's like here, he said. See what I've got to go back to Hogwarts? It's only a matter of time. I've got, well, I think I've got friends. Friends who don't write to Harry Potter, said Dobby shyly. I expect they must have been. Wait a minute, said Harry, frowning. How do you know my friends haven't been writing to me? Dobby shuffled his feet. Harry Potter mustn't be angry with Dobby. Dobby did it for the best. Have you been stopping my letters? Dobby has them here, sir, said the elf, stepping nimbly out of Harry's reach. He pulled a thick wad of envelopes from inside the pillowcase he was wearing. Harry could make out Hermione's neat writing, Ron's untidy scrawl, even a scribble that looked as though it was from the Hogwarts gamekeeper, Hagrid. Dobby blinked anxiously at the Harry. Harry mustn't be angry. Dobby hoped if Harry Potter thought his friends had forgotten him, Harry Potter might not want to go back to school, sir. Harry wasn't listening. He made a grab at the letters, but Dobby jumped out of reach. Harry Potter will have them, sir, if he gives Dobby his word that he will not return to Hogwarts. Ah, sir, this is a danger you must not face. Say you will not go back, sir. No, said Harry angrily. Give me my friend's letters. Then 
Harry Potter leaves Dobby no choice, said the elf sadly. Before Harry could move, Dobby had darted to the bedroom door, pulled it open, and sprinted downstairs. Mouth dry, stomach lurching, Harry sprang after him, trying not to make a sound. He jumped the next six steps, landing cat-like on the carpet, looking around for Dobby. From the dining room, he heard Uncle Vernon saying, Tell Patini that very funny story about the American plumbers. Mr. Mason, she's been dying to hear it. Harry ran up the hall into the kitchen and felt his stomach disappear. Aunt Petunia's masterpiece of a pudding, the mountain of cream and sugared violets, was floating up near the searing. On top of a cupboard in the corner crouched Dobby. No, croaked Harry, please, they're gonna kill me. Harry must say he's not going back to school. Dobby, please, say it, sir, I can't. Dobby gave him a tragic look. Then Dodgy must do it, sir, for Harry Potter's own good. He's going to make it worse. The pudding fell on the floor with a hurt-stopping crash. Cream splattered in the windows and the walls and the dish splattered. With a crack like a whip, Dobby vanished. There were screams from the dining room, and Uncle Vernon burst into the kitchen to find Harry, rigid and shocked, covered from head to toe in Aunt Petunia's pudding. At first, it looked as though Uncle Vernon would manage to gloss the whole thing over. Just our never very disturbed meeting strangers upsets him, so we kept him upstairs. He shooed and shocked the Masons back into the dining room, promised Harry he would fillet him to within an inch of his life when the Masons had left, and managed to find a mop. Aunt Petunia dug some ice cream out of the freezer, and Harry, still shaking, started scrubbing the kitchen clean. Uncle Vernon might have been able to make his deal if it hadn't been for the owl. Aunt Petunia was just passing around a box of after-dinner mints when a huge barn owl sweeped through the dining room window, dropped a letter on the mason's head, and swooped out again. Mrs. Mason screamed like a banshee and ran out of the house shouting like lunatics. Mr. Mason stayed just long enough to tell the Dursleys that his wife was mortally afraid of birds of all shapes and sizes and to ask whether this was their idea of a joke. Harry stood in the kitchen, clutching the mop for support as Uncle Vernon advanced on him, a demonic glint in his eye. Read it. He hissed evenly, brandishing the letter the owl had delivered. Go on, read it. Harry took it. It did not contain a birthday greeting. Dear Mr. Potter, we have intelligence that a hover charm was used at your place of residence this evening at 12 minus past 9. As you know, underage wizards are not allowed to perform spells outside of school, and further spell work on your part may lead to expulsion from the school. Decree of Reasonable Restrictions of Underage Sorcery, 1875, Paragraph C. We would like to ask you to remember that any magical activity that risks notice by members of the non-magical community, muggles, is a serious offense under Section 13 of the International Confederation of Warlock Statute of Secrecy. Enjoy your holiday. Malfonda Hopcrick, Improper Use of Magic Office, Ministry of Magic. Harry looked up at the letter and gulped. You didn't tell us you weren't allowed to use magic outside of school, said Uncle Vernon, a mad gleam dancing in his eyes. Forgot to mention it. Slipped your mind, I dare say. He was bearing down on Harry like a great bulldog, all his teeth bare. Well, I've got news for you, boy. I'm locking you up. You're never going back to that school, never. And if you try that magic yourself, well, they'll expel you. And laughing like a maniac, he dragged Harry back upstairs. Uncle Vernon was as bad as his word. The following morning, he paid a man to fit bars on Harry's window. He fitted himself a cat flap in the bedroom door so that small amounts of food could be pushed inside three times a day. They let Harry out to use the bathroom morning and evening, otherwise he was locked in his room around the clock. Three days later, the Dursleys were showing no sign of relenting, and Harry couldn't see any way out of the situation. He lay on his bed, watching the sun sinking behind the gray bars in the window, and wondered miserably what was going to happen to him. What was the good of magicking himself out of the room if Hogwarts would expel him for doing it? Yet, life at Privet Jive had reached an all-time low. Now that the Dursleys knew they weren't going to wake up as fruit bats, he lost his only weapon. Dobby might have saved Harry from horrible happenings at Hogwarts, but the way things were, he'd probably starve to death anyway. The cat flap rattled, and Aunt Petunia's hand appeared, pushing a bowl of canned soup into the room. Harry, whose sides were aching with hunger, jumped off his bed and seized it. The soup was so cold, but he drank half a gulp of it. Then he crossed the room to Hedwitch's cage and tossed the soggy vegetables at the bottom of the bowl into her empty food tray. 
She ruffled her feathers and gave him a deep look of disgust. It's no good turning your beak up at it. That's all you got, said Harry grimly. He put the empty bowl back on the floor next to the cat flap and lay back on the bed, somehow even hungrier than he had been before the soup. Supposing he was still alive in another four weeks, what would happen if he didn't turn up at Hogwarts? Would someone be sent to see why he hadn't come back? Would they be able to make the Dursleys let him go? The room was growing dark, exhausted, stomach rumbling, mind spinning over into the same unanswered questions Harry felt into an uneasy sleep. He dreamed that he was on a show in a zoo, in a card reading underage wizard attached to his cage, people googling through the bars at him as he lay, starving and weak on a bed of straw. He saw Dobby's face in the crowd and shout out, asking for help, but Dobby yelled, Harry Potter is safe there, sir, and vanished. Then the Dursleys disappeared, and Dudley rattled the bars of the cage, laughing at him. Stop it, Harry muttered, as rattling pounded on his sore head. Leave me alone. Cut it out. I'm trying to sleep. He opened his eyes. Moonlight was shining through the bars of the window, and someone was googling through the bars at him. A freckled face, red-haired, long-nosed someone. Ron Weasley was outside Harry's window. I think that is a great place to end today's adventure. What did you think, Madame Owl? Yeah, I don't like Dobby right now either. But maybe we'll see what happens next time, okay? We'll see you next time, here on Wayne Reads. Thank you for joining us, and we can't wait to see you again. Bye-bye!